Our fourth and final sniper position is behind the stockade fence on the grassy knoll. This is the location many conspiracy theorists believe is the most likely spot for a second gunman. A conclusion reinforced by a photograph taken by Mary Ann Mormon, seen here with her camera in the Zapruder film. This is where a shape appears in the Mary Mormon photograph of the Kennedy assassination, a shape that is no longer in this location in later pictures. So that was a person. That's the speculation that that shape was actually a grassy knoll gunman, the second gunman in the Kennedy assassination. Limo and actors move to their mark. You've certainly got the possibility of a shot there. You're a lot closer. You're a lot more in control of the whole situation. Is there enough room to track your target to see him in time? Uh, the window's not enormous, but yes. Okay. The other is sufficient. So if there were a second gunman in the Kennedy assassination, odds are pretty good that he'd be right here. Provided he could remain undetected and provided he could get away, yes. If a gunman had fired from this grassy knoll location, what would have happened to his target inside the limousine? Can we match forensic evidence that exactly duplicates frame 313 of the Zapruder film? In order to find out, we need to go deeper into this investigation than anyone has ever gone before. We need to build a target that recreates a human skull. Then, exactly reproduce Dealey Plaza on a gun range. And from two killing angles, our substitute assassin needs to take his best shot. In 1964, the Warren Commission attempted to understand the shots that killed John Kennedy. These and later experiments by other researchers tried to explain the assassination. Until now, forensic science was limited. Existing technology could not create accurate anatomical targets. Today, it is possible to design and build an exact replica of a human head, a target that will allow us to restage the assassination and test exactly what would happen to a human head if shot from two locations. There is only one place on Earth where scientists and engineers can create human duplicates. Australia and the laboratory of Adelaide T&E Systems. Here they design and build realistic bodies to test munitions for the defense industry. seemed like a very, very difficult task, but one that we were happy to take on. We want to make sure that the surrogate contains all of the elements or all of the parameters that, that the bullet would actually see on that particular day. Adelaide t and &E Systems begins to design and build our ballistic target. But how could they be certain that it had the exact dimensions of John Kennedy's head? To begin with, Kennedy's known hat size, seven and three eighths. We've actually modelled all of these components based on the circumference of JFK's head. So this is actually a scale model of his head. And straight away we realised that it was going to be a challenging exercise because really we needed to create this skull in one piece. The design will include all the interior structures of the head, starting with the brain. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. Well, Oops. I think we can get on to the next step. The step by step, they create a human head. We have to build it from the inside out. So we've started with the brain, we're now onto the dura, we'll now pour a skull around the outside, and then we'll finish off with soft tissue. The team creates a skull, and the final assembly begins. Okay, well, the brain and dura have been precisely located inside the skull, and the skull material has been cast around it, and that has provided us with the correct uh, bone thicknesses throughout the skull. The next step involves designing a suitable exterior, soft tissue, molding it with exacting precision around the skull. Only one thing remains to be added, but not now. Just before our test shots, they will inject simulated brain matter inside the skull. 
Our four targets will be as close to human as humanly possible. But I think in terms of forensic recreation, you need to go to this level of accuracy to actually get the desired result. And, uh, and whilst we're not sure of what that result will actually be, I think that we've produced four models now that will perform in the right way. On a California shooting range, we replicated the distances of Dealey Plaza. Three shots are planned. One from Oswald's alleged perch and two from the grassy knoll location. No one knows what weapon would have been used from this alleged knoll position. Michael Yardley selects a Winchester, a more accurate rifle than the Carcano. So you're happy? Yeah, I'm happy. All righty. Our first head is now mounted on a rigid crash test dummy neck. To keep the debris pattern consistent, we wanted nothing to vary in movement from test to test. Next, we roll in one final guarantee for our forensic accuracy. We have the Weather Bureau data, which was taken from just a few miles away. The wind was coming straight at the car at 15 miles per hour, gusting to 20 miles an hour. The limousine had slowed down to between seven and eight, eight and a half miles an hour. So we've got a total of somewhere between 20 and 25 miles per hour. We want to see how the matter that goes up in the air from that fatal shot, what happens to it. That's why we have a fan. Everything is ready. Now, where do you want me to put that bullet precisely? Well, the theories are that Kennedy was hit in the head uh, somewhere between the ear and the eye and above. So I would say that would be right in this area here. Okay, no problem. Let's All right. Yep. Let's go For his first shot, Michael chambers a soft point round. Any professional assassin who wanted to make sure he killed his target would use this kind of bullet. Yardley takes the first grassy knoll shot. If a second gunman wanted to take no chances, this would have been the result. Complete obliteration of the target. But history and the Zapruder film are clear. That did not happen in Dallas. Now it is time for a second test, using the same ammunition that Lee Harvey Oswald was said to have used. We position the second of our artificial heads. Yardley takes aim. And hits the exact mark. Well, look at that. Oh my. Yeah. That's an exit wound, and there would have been a dead Jackie right here. Our test shows that the bullet would have passed through John Kennedy and hit Jackie, killing her as well. In addition, our test shows massive damage to the left side of the skull, an area undamaged in the official autopsy report. Well, there's no damage at all on the left side of Kennedy. This result does not correspond to any of the historical evidence, so no. we may have just proven that there wasn't a gunman on the grassy knoll. What do you think? That's the way it looks. Now time for a third test, from behind, from our simulated sixth floor window. This shot has to be precise and duplicate the quarter inch hole that matches existing autopsy records. What are we basing this bullet point on historically, Gary? Well, we're, we're basing it on something that the Warren Commission did not have in 1964. The actual autopsy photographs and x-rays of President Kennedy, which were examined officially in the late 1970s. We know that there is a, a bullet entry hole up in this area and an exit hole in the front. And that's what we're trying to test. We have two heads left. One extra in case Mike Yardley misses his shot. If he makes it, one of the mysteries of the Kennedy assassination might be solved. And history will be remade.